So we want to be able to repair scratches that might happen in our glaze guard finish or maybe you've missed, uh, missed a spot on the tile and uh, what's the procedure for fixing that going over that area. So uh, glaze guard's not easy to scratch but uh, it can be scratched and here we're putting some minor scratches into the surface just to show you. Um, I think it's, uh, or we recommend that you do a tile if you have a scratch in the tile or a missed spot in the tile rather than uh, just do a spot in the tile it's better to do the whole tile right I think it will blend in better if you tape around the ground lines and um, sand and repair that tile rather than just doing a spot in the tile uh, so the first thing to do then is to use painters tape or blue tape and uh, use the ground lines as your guide and just tape around uh, um, the outside of the grout line there so that uh, you finish any recoating in the actual grout. Uh, we can sand the surface with uh, 220 grit sandpaper um, right up to 400 just depends on how uh, deep the gouges are. Um, we're not trying to remove the sealer we're just trying to sand it down further, further down any high spots um, and we want to be careful we don't damage the tile. Uh, we don't recommend that you go any heavy grit, any heavier sand grit than the uh, 120. And that would be if you really had, uh, you know, maybe a high spot uh, and you wanted to smooth that down. Uh, generally, we're talking about 220 grit. And um, if you're just dulling the area down, then uh, 400 grit. Right, anything that we're going to coat over, uh, we need to dull it down. We need to scuff it up with the sandpaper. Um, the surface needs to be dull, clean, and dry uh, when we coat over it. All right, so that's why we talk about using 220 grit in order to uh, achieve that. Um, if you're doing large areas, you know you can use a floor machine, uh, a, a, a floor buffing machine with 120 grit. Uh, you can use a, a pole, a swivel pole with uh, uh, the grit on it, uh, the sandpaper on it, that's another way, um, rather than um, doing it by hand, but if you are going to do it by hand, you can use a palm sander as well. Uh, once we've uh, sanded the surface, uh, we want to clean off the dust, we want to um, make sure that it's clean and then dry. You can use a damp cloth, uh, a cloth that's slightly damp with water, or you can use something like r rubbing alcohol which uh, dries and, and flashes off quickly. Um, the main thing is not to leave that surface with a lot of water or a lot of moisture on it. Once we've uh, sanded down the surface and cleaned it off, we're ready to recoat. Uh, the sample kits that we make, um, they're little four ounce uh, or three ounce kits uh, that will do up to 10 uh, square meters. I'm sorry, 10 square feet. So there's plenty of that to do little spot repairs and uh, we sell those uh, for each of the sheets. Um, so you can mix those up or if you have some material left over from your original application, you can mix up, uh, mix up a small batch there. Just make sure that you're mixing it in the relevant ratios. Three to one if you're using the satin or uh, gloss. Uh, two to one if you're using the matte finish. Once you've uh, mixed up the material, you can apply it uh, with a little hot dog roller, a little four inch roller, I think gives the best results. You could also use a, a foam roller uh, or a foam brush uh, just to uh, touch up the area. As soon as you've applied the sealer, it's important to pull the, uh, the tape, right? Uh, we don't want to leave lines uh, where the sealer has gone over the, uh, the blue tape. So as soon as you, you've finished applying, uh, pull that tape and just feather out any uh, uh, lines that you see. So everything blends in. These last uh, images or videos are showing what the uh, sealer looks like or what the tire looks like after we've carried out the repair. Yeah, and you can see it blends in well with the existing finish.